Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to Duckbait TV. We are having some technical issues right now with our camera. Our, um, one of our cables for our camera got bent up a little bit and so it is uh, not transmitting the video like it should. And uh, we're gonna continue to work on that. Hopefully we can get that up and running as we go along tonight, but we're gonna try to do our best um, describing things kind of like old school radio style here uh, for the time being. Uh, we are tied at seven. Fort Scott is uh, taking on Piedmont out of Oklahoma City. And again, we are tied at seven here with a minute to go in the first quarter. Again, we do apologize for no video at the moment. We are working, continuing to work on that and hopefully we can get something figured out uh, shortly. We are tied at seven. Cannon Brown has five of the seven for Fort Scott. Dirks Kegler also has the other two for the Tigers. So again, we are tied at seven late in the first quarter. Piedmont with the basketball out front, and they kick it to one of their subs. We'll get that figured out in a second here. 10 seconds, down to nine. Layup there is good, and that will end the first quarter. So our first quarter ends with your score, Piedmont nine, and Fort Scott Seven. Bryce McConnell was the one that got the final uh, bucket there of the quarter. So that'll close out the first quarter. Again, your score, Piedmont nine, Fort Scott seven. Piedmont team defeated Nevada last night. By about 20 or so. And kind of started fairly close. Kind of like this one has so far. But then they were able to turn it on in the second quarter and kind of run away with things. We'll see how Fort Scott responds here in the second quarter. Again, we do apologize for no picture at the moment. Um, one of our cables, the connector that goes into our camera, uh, got bent at some point in the evening uh, between the two games. And um, it is not transmitting the video at the moment. We're going to still continue to broadcast here with no picture for, for right now. And hopefully, uh, we'll continue to play with the, the, the cable and see if we can get things going on the camera side. We do apologize for no picture at the moment. Um, we got a whistle as we are underway here in the uh, second quarter. And now we, we got blood. And Rocco's got some... Morocco's got some blood, it looks like, on his jersey. So they've stopped the clock here to try to get some of that figured out. Rocco may have a, new <laughs> have a new jersey here in a few minutes. We'll keep you updated on that as well. So Rocco's going to come out here for the moment. Dub's going to come back in. So the Tigers... We'll have Dirks Kegler, Cannon Brown, Spencer Goldston, Cal Cousins, and Dub Chipman on the floor right now. Drive to the basket there, and a shot is good from Cam Hanrahan. Hanrahar, excuse me. So 
So that'll make it 11 to seven. Piedmont with the lead. Fort Scott works it over far side to Dirks Kegler. He's got it on the far side wing. Now dribbles to the middle of the court. Now over to Cal for three. Off the front rim, no good. Rebound Piedmont. And now a whistle. As Dirks Kegler is going to get foul called on him. I don't know. Oh. Keep, yeah, keep doing that. I don't. Three pointer on the way from Connor Beard. It's in and out, no good. Rebound, Cal Cousins. Fort Scott dribbles it now. Ball was knocked out of bounds there. It'll stay with Fort Scott. Rocco's coming in. As Dirks Kegler would come out for a quick breather. Shot there by Fort Scott's no good. Piedmont grabs the rebound quickly down the court. They kick it out. They're subbing loose and fast here. Trying to keep up with that. Here's a drive to the bucket. Shot there is good. Ethan Holiday got the points that time for Piedmont. Fort Scott needs a bucket here. And Cannon Brown hits another three. That's the second one he's made tonight. Foul on Cal Cousins here. That'll be the first one on Cal. 5.09 to go here in the second quarter. 13 to 10, Piedmont with the lead over Fort Scott. Again, thanks for joining us on Duckbait TV. And again, we do apologize. We do not have video at the moment. Um, still working on that. Hopefully we can get that figured out here. Drive to the bucket for Piedmont, and it's going to be another foul, it looks like, on Fort Scott. going to be the second foul on Cal Cousins, so he'll come out for a moment. Dirks Kegler will come back in. And a travel now called on Piedmont. Cannon Brown for three, and it's no good. Three on the way from Bryce McConnell, and that is no good. Still 13 to 10, Fort Scott trailing by three, but with the basketball. Dub Chipman has it in the left corner. He'll drive the baseline, now kicks it back out to Rocco. Rocco drives, kicks it back out to Brown. Now they get it back to, in the hands of Dirks Kegler. He'll work left, drive, and they're going to call a charge on Dirks. The ball back over.
Just under four minutes to go here in the second quarter. Drive here by Lloyd for Piedmont. Shot is no good. Rebound Fort Scott. Foul here on Walker Kennedy for Piedmont. That'll be the first one on Piedmont here in the second quarter. Is that a whistle? Foul away from the basket, it looks like. It's going to go on Ethan Holiday, his first. 321 to go here in the second quarter. It is 13 to 10. Fort Scott trails Piedmont by three points here in the second quarter. Rocco's got it, now kicks it back around to Dub out at the top of the key. He'll go back inside. Ball is in and out. Shot is in and out there by Rocco. Three-pointer on the way from Piedmont. That one's no good. Fort Scott with the rebound, and now we got a whistle and a foul at the other end again on the Wildcats. Let me the second foul on Ethan Holiday. Drive to the bucket. And now we got another foul, it looks like, on Piedmont. First foul on Cam Henrahar. And the fourth team foul on the Wildcats here in the second quarter. So the next one will put the Fort Scott Tigers in the double bonus. Drive here, shot there is good by Dirks Kegler. That'll get the game back to within one. At 13 to 12. Lloyd with the ball out front for Piedmont. He's gonna take it to the center circle. And reset the offense. Fort Scott in a man to man defense here. Pass off to Kennedy. Back around and move it really quickly. Cam Hanrahar with it. Now back over to Lloyd. Lloyd's got it. Back to the top into the hands of Kennedy. Kennedy drives right side. Shot blocked, but he got the put back. Coach Kroll asking why that wasn't a jump ball. as both players had a hand on it. Dirks Kegler is going to get the points at the other end. For Fort Scott, that'll get it back to a one-point game at 15 to 14. 130 to go here in the second quarter, and the ball is knocked out of bounds, lost out of bounds by Piedmont, so they will have the basketball. With 1.28 to go here in the second quarter. Fort Scott turnover turns into two more points for the Wildcats. Back to a three point game, 17 to 14. Now Cannon Brown, who's had a pretty good game so far for the Tigers. He has eight points to lead Fort Scott. He's got it in the corner. Dribbles around one, kicks it back to Dub in the corner for three. In and out, no good. Rebound, Piedmont. 
40 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Piedmont, I think, running their version of the four corners, try to run the clock out here, leading by three. Going into the break, it looks like Piedmont will have the uh, possession arrow, so if no tie balls between now and the end of the quarter, they will start the second half with the basketball. White has it, Hayes White, he'll kick it back to the top to Connor Beard. He'll drive all the way in, some contact, nothing called, and the ball's gonna go back over to Fort Scott as it was lost out of bounds. 4.5 seconds left to go. Inbounds play, they get it back to Dirks, and they're gonna call a foul there with 1.4 seconds, and that will put Dirks at the line for a bonus. Foul's gonna go on Connor Beard, his second. And Fort Scott has held their own with this Piedmont Wildcat team, and Piedmont, is, Piedmont, Oklahoma is a suburb of Oklahoma City. First free throw by Dirks is good. Second free throw is also good. So that'll make it a two point game shot at the buzzer. I think it was a little late, it misses anyway. So that will take us to the end of the first half with your score. Piedmont 17 and Fort Scott 16.
Well, hi, everyone. And again, we do apologize. Thanks for, first of all, thanks for joining us here on Duckbait TV. Uh, we do not have video at the moment. Uh, we do apologize for that. We have a, uh, a cable that hooks into our camera that takes the video feed from the camera to the computer. And that cable has gotten bent somewhere between the two games tonight. And it is no longer working. And so we do not have video at the moment and may not for the remainder of the night. And we do apologize for that. We are going to try everything we can to rectify the problem before tomorrow. Um, it'll be an early turnaround for us as the Lady Tigers play at 10 o'clock in the morning. But we will do everything we can to get this fixed. And we want to thank you for your patience. Um, this, I'm just going to say, this sucks. <laughs> We've had a great game here tonight. And you all can't see what we're seeing because... We had a malfunction, and, and I, I deeply apologize for that. Um, we need to have backup stuff, and we need to have backups for our backups <laughs> because uh, that's just the way it is. And um, cheap, obviously, isn't always better. And uh, we're learning. We're figuring that out. And, again, do apologize uh, for that. No video at the moment. Probably not for the remainder of the night. And uh, that, that sucks. And I do apologize for that because this has been a good game. The Fort Scott Tigers trail by one here at the half, 17-16. to 16. Hopefully you're seeing the scoreboard. Um, unfortunately, I think that's about all we can give you at the moment. Um, as Fort Scott leads this one, and we're going to – do this kind of an old school radio style, I guess, with no picture. Uh, we'll try to explain everything as much as we can. Um, So Fort Scott has a uh, has had a great first half here against Piedmont. Uh, one thing we didn't get a chance to tell you in the pregame is that this Wildcat team has 13 guys on their roster. Only two of them are listed as under six feet. Uh, so they've got some height. They do not, however, have anyone quite as tall as... Um, as Rocco Lafredo, who is actually, and if you could see this, you would see this, in a different jersey. He had some blood on his jersey in the first half, and so he's changed jerseys. He's actually wearing number 55 right now. And uh, so, but anyway, uh, right now leading points for Fort Scott. Uh, they've got 16 as a team, and two guys have combined for that. Dirks Kegler with eight and Cannon Brown with eight are the only two that have scored points right now for the Tigers for Piedmont. They've got a few more scores as they're a little bit more spread out. Um, their leading score is Walker Kennedy with six, Ethan Holliday with four, Connor Beard with three, Cam Hanrahar with two, Bryce McConnell with two. So that's uh, where we've got uh, th – those are the, the points scored for Piedmont here at the break. Uh, again, Cannon Brown actually came out pretty hot. He got a, a couple of threes and uh, that two-pointer – and had those eight points fairly quickly for the Tigers. He came in when they found the blood. Well, maybe it was before that anyway. Um, but he, I was going to say he came in when they found the blood on Rocco's jersey and just went right to, to scoring points for the Tigers as he got um, eight of the first ten, I believe. And then Dirks has come back with the last few for the Tigers as we sit at 17-16. Low scoring affair, of course, here in the first half. But uh, Fort Scott holding their own. Uh, we saw Piedmont play Nevada last night, and they really handled Nevada, especially in the second half, uh, second quarter and, and early portions of the second half. So we were nervous for the Tigers, but uh, this is looking to be uh, – Fort Scott has come to play here tonight, and that's a good thing to see. So looking forward to this as we get into the second half of this one here. And Piedmont will start with the basketball working right to left across the gym here as we look at it. Three-pointer there.
Bryce McConnell with the three-pointer, one of their post players. And now we got a whistle. And it looks like a foul gonna be called on Dirks Kegler. It'll be his second of the game. Excuse me, it's Walker Kennedy, the other number, th their number three. So Walker Kennedy with that foul. I'll have to change that in my book here in just a minute. Fort Scott. They're starting five out there. Drive here by Spencer Goldston, and he got fouled on the way to the basket. Connor Beard picks up his third foul. He may be coming out here. So Fort Scott will have some free throws here. And Beard will come out. Braden Lloyd will check in. Second free throw good as well, so Spencer makes them both. And that'll make it 20 to 18. Back to a two point game and now a turnover. Call to carry here on Piedmont. So ball goes back over to Fort Scott with 6.35 to go. Kick to Dub Chipman in the corner. He'll drive in. Nice shot off the glass for Chipman. So Dub with the basket there. That'll make it tie. That'll make it uh, a tie game. Twenty all here in the third quarter. Another shot missed by Piedmont. So Fort Scott will have it back. Now Kegler gets inside and took a couple extra steps, it looks like. So they call traveling there on Dirks Kegler. That'll go back over to the Wildcats. Five forty-six to go here in the third quarter. Piedmont back with the basketball. They get it to Bryce McConnell. He's, I think, their tallest guy, and he's still out there shooting three-pointers. Here's a three from the corner. That one goes for Cam Hanrahar. So 23 to 20. Cal's got it. Now kicks it into the corner to Dub. Dub drives the baseline, and ooh, they're going to call a charge on Dub. That'll be his first, team's first of the quarter. Excuse me, that's Dub's second foul of the game. Lloyd gets it across the timeline for Piedmont. Now he's standing out there near the center line. He'll drive on Dirks, now kicks it into the corner, back around to the wing. Nice ball movement by Piedmont. Now they kick it back around to Kennedy. He'll drive from the top of the key. Now passes it to Holiday. 4.50 to go here in the third quarter. Fort Scott trailing by three. Back over to Kennedy. He'll drive in. Shot there is good for Walker Kennedy, and the lead goes to five. Dub picks up his dribble. Now finds Cal Cousins. 
Pascal trying to keep the dribble and gets fouled, it looks like. Foul's going to be on Braden Lloyd of Piedmont, his first. Team's second of the quarter. Fort Scott gets Cannon Brown back in the game. As Kegler will come out. Spencer Goldston dribbles at the top of the key. He'll take it, now picks up his dribble, finds Cannon in the corner. Now back out it comes to Spencer. He'll drive from the top, down low. And one too many passes there. It gets knocked away. Cal gets it. Back over to, now back to Cal. He'll sling it around into the corner. Dub. He'll drive baseline. Tries to get a block. Doesn't get it called. Now back out to Spencer. And they'll reset the offense again. And now foul is going to be called again on Piedmont. This time it looks like it's going to go on Cam Hanrahar. Be his second. And another inbound play here for the Tigers. They get it into Spencer, back out near the center circle. And we got a whistle, and a foul is going to be called again on Piedmont. That's their fourth here in the quarter. So Ethan Holiday, that is his third foul. Another inbound play here for the Tigers. But the next foul here in the third quarter will give Fort Scott double bonus. Going forward here in the quarter, of course, that'll reset at the end of this period. Pass there. Wondered if that might have been deflected, but it wasn't. So it'll go back over to Piedmont. 25 to 20. Fort Scott trailing by just five here to Piedmont. Ethan Holiday has it. He'll pull it back out and reset the offense himself. They're really taking some time here in this game. Well, they found back door open, but the ball was bobbled. Piedmont gets it back, though. Tough luck for the Tigers. Drive to the bucket. Kick into the corner. Big guy with a three-pointer, and it's good. Bryce McConnell. And Fort Scott's going to take a timeout, I do believe. With 2.49 to go here in the third quarter. Biggest lead of the night for Piedmont as they lead it 28-20. to Fort Scott takes a timeout. And it'll be a full timeout. Looks like Dirks Kegler is about to check in as well for the Tigers. Again, we do apologize for no video at the moment. Um, again, that looks like it's going to be the case for the remainder of the evening, and we really we hate that. I hate that. That's just terrible that we don't have enough. Um, that I didn't make sure we had some backup equipment to help us out in this situation. So I do apologize for that. Um, we had a cable that got bent in between games. Uh, not sure exactly. Could have been. At, they're a little bit flimsy, and, and we didn't take care of it like we needed to. And so uh, we, we do not have the video coverage at the moment, and uh, that's my fault. I do apologize for that. Uh, this game has been a great one for the Tigers, and uh, we can't send you the pictures of it. Uh, we can only get the sound at the moment. So, uh, again, we do apologize for that. The Tigers do lead it 28-20. to 20. Excuse me, they trail it 28 to 20, and they'll come out of the timeout here. 2.49 to go in the third quarter. So Dub is. Going to toss it in. There's a discussion over at the scores table. Not sure what that's about.
So they're giving an explanation here to both coaches about what they've discussed. Two of the officials. Again, we can't hear what they're discussing. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but it's like we got enough of an explanation and we're going to get ready to play again here. So ball in play. Fort Scott with it. Dub Chipman's got it. Wing extended. Now they'll kick it back around as Dirks Kegler is back on the floor here. Cal Cousins getting a little bit of a break. Dub lost it for a moment but gets it back. Now they kick it to Cannon Brown. Brown tried a leading pass and led just a little bit too much. Trying to get it in there to Rocco. Goes out of bounds. So back over to Piedmont with 2.14 to play. Winner of this game plays in the boys' championship game. Scheduled at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Or 2.30 maybe. Pass stolen by Fort Scott. And layup is good. Rocco got the basket there for Fort Scott. Twenty-eight to twenty-two, and drive to the basket, and nobody stepped in front of Brandon, Braden Lloyd, and he hits the bucket. So that makes it thirty to twenty-two. Now we got a whistle. And looks like a foul going to be on Piedmont. Walker Kennedy picks up foul number three. And now free throws coming for Rocco Lafredo. Rocco coming into tonight. A 55% free throw shooter. Makes the first one there. And makes the second one. Rocco hits them both. He's now got four on the night. Lead trimmed back to six for Piedmont. Pass goes into the corner. Three-pointer on the way. That one does not go. Rebound goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Piedmont. So Walker Kennedy hits a three. And then quickly a timeout taken. So 33 to 24. And Piedmont quickly takes a timeout after. The basket is good. Pass deflected, stolen away by Piedmont, and here they come. Layup is good. Thirty-five twenty-four. Lead balloons to eleven, and now we've got ball 
Lost out of bounds by Fort Scott again. And this is kind of what we saw, saw earlier in the game last night with Nevada for Piedmont, but this is kind of what we saw with Piedmont against Nevada in that game last night. They just got on a roll and expanded a lead. Twelve seconds to go here in the quarter. Out to Kennedy. Now they'll kick it back around to Hanrahar at the top of the key. Now into the corner to Kennedy. He'll drive the baseline, puts up a shot. It doesn't go. Rebound to Cal Cousins, and that will end the third quarter here tonight with your score, Piedmont 35, Fort Scott 24. So fourth, fourth quarter underway here. Fort Scott with the basketball. And they say it was knocked out of bounds by Piedmont. So Fort Scott will retain possession here. Oh, they gave a foul. They called a foul on Cam Han Hanrahar. So that's his third foul. First one quickly. Spencer hits a three-pointer there for the Tigers. That'll get them back in this one a little bit. Now they need a stop on defense. Three-pointer, wide open three-pointer. It's in and out, though. No good. Rebound, batted, loose, still loose on the floor. Five, still loose, finally picked up by Kegler and a timeout, Fort Scott. 7-13 to go. Braden Lloyd missed an open three-pointer, and the rebound was batted around for quite a while, finally picked up there by Dirks, and Coach Kroll called a quick timeout to retain possession. They've got plenty of timeouts to use in that kind of a situation, at least in the moment, so that's not a bad play there. They'll keep the basketball. 7-13 to go here in the fourth quarter. 35-27, Fort Scott trailing by eight. They just hit a three-pointer and hoping to mount a comeback here in the fourth quarter. The winner goes to the championship game. That'll be played tomorrow afternoon. The loser will play in the third place game, which will be right after the Lady Tigers play tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Pass to Rocco at the top, lost it for a moment, gets it back to Cal, shot there, too strong or too short off the side of the rim. Now Piedmont with the basketball. Holiday. Gets it over to Connor Beard for a three that goes. So 
Fort Scott gets it to Dub in the corner. Dub back around to the top. He'll drive in, now kicks it to Dirks. Dirks drives in from the wing, gets stopped there, picks up his dribble, now looking to pass it. And finally gets it to Dub. Now they get it inside, back out to Spencer for three. Got it! Thirty-eight to thirty. Three pointer at the other end by Kennedy. That one doesn't go. Rebound, and they're going to get it over the back, I believe. On Cam Henrahar checks back in here for Piedmont. That foul called on Connor Beard, his fifth, fourth. So he came out. Dirks has the ball for Fort Scott over on the far side wing. Now they get it inside to Rocco. Rocco lost it for a moment, dribbling it around, puts one up. It's too short. Rebound taken by. Piedmont, nice steal try there by Dirks Kegler. Got his hand in the way, but knocked it out of bounds. Couldn't get a hold of it before it went out of bounds. Drive to the baseline there by Piedmont. Now kicks it back out to the top. They get it out to McConnell. Again, he's the tallest guy on the roster, but he's more of a Luka Doncic kind of player. As he's more of a shooter. And foul's going to be on Dub Chipman for Fort Scott. And that's his four, uh, third. Third one on Dub here tonight. 4.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Ethan Holiday has the ball for Piedmont. Now back over to Kennedy on the far side. Oh, that's a carry. They didn't call it, and it was knocked in the backcourt by Dub, so they get to reset. Here's a three-pointer, and that's good. Tough luck for the Tigers on that possession. 41 to 30. Handoff goes, and it's knocked away. Got a whistle. Foul's going to be on the floor. Going to be on Cal Cousins. It's a third foul of the night on Cal. And now Dub gets his fourth foul. So Walker Kennedy will go to the line here for Piedmont. First free throw is good. Now Dub will come out. Well, Cal will come out. Dub's going to stay out there right now with four fouls. As Cal comes out and Cannon Brown checks back in. Second free throw is good for Walker Kennedy. He made them both. 43-30, to 30, that lead that Fort Scott was working on cutting down is now back out to 13. Team that loses this game will play Life Prep at 11.30, scheduled 11.30 tomorrow morning. The team that wins, that'll be the third place game, the team that wins this one will play Webb City for the championship tomorrow afternoon. Another Fort Scott turnover there. 3.41 to go. Back around, left side. Now back to the right. Braden Lloyd has it over there. He'll drive in, puts one off the glass, doesn't go. Put back is no good. That was a wild looking shot, and he's going to get some free throws for it. Foul's going to go on Dirks Kegler. That'll work out in Fort Scott's favor, kind of, sort of. That's just the second one on Dirks tonight. It'll be free throws for Bryce McConnell. McConnell's got eight points tonight, two three pointers in those eight. The tallest guy on the roster for Piedmont. 
and he makes the first. Cal's gonna come in. And so stole a couple of minutes there with Dub on the fly, on the floor with five, four fouls. So he will come out with, for the quick breather. Cal replaces him. Second free throw is also good there for Piedmont. That'll make it a 15 point game, 45 to 30. Quickly down the court goes Cal Cousins. He'll put up a shot and got it. Cal gets it at the other end for Fort Scott. Layup is good for Walker Kennedy. 47 to 32. Fort Scott, a little trouble getting it in bounds that time, but they do. Spencer drives it all the way into the lane. Shot does not go. They're going to call a foul on the floor. Ethan Holiday will pick up that foul. An inbounds play coming for the Tigers. They'll get it in to Cal near the center logo out there. Now he'll drive to his right back to his left and puts one in. So Cal Cousins gets the bucket there for Fort Scott. Love to see Fort Scott, they have not quit in this game tonight. It has been a tough second half for them, but they have not quit, and that is the grit that you want for a Fort Scott Tiger, for the Fort Scott Tiger program. You saw that with the Lady Tigers. They were trailing by 12 at halftime of their game tonight. Came back, led by one late. Clara Swearingen of Nevada hit a shot at the buzzer to win that game for Nevada. Lady Tigers outscored Nevada 17 to three in the third quarter of that one. To come all the way back. There's a shot good by Walker Kennedy as he drove to the lane again. Now Cal's got it out front, it's knocked away. Layup by Walker Kennedy is good. He's got 19. Now we're starting to see that athleticism from Piedmont. Three-pointer there by Spencer doesn't go. Rebound Lloyd for Piedmont. Now he'll bring it back out. 124 to go in this one. 51 to 34. Tried to dunk it, but Going to get a foul on Fort Scott. Looks like a foul on Rocco Lafredo. That'll be the first one on Rocco called tonight. Foul shots coming for Braden Lloyd. And he missed the first. 119 to go, 51 to 34. Fort Scott trails. Piedmont, Oklahoma. Missed them both. We got a whistle. It looks like a foul on Piedmont. It'll be the second foul on Braden Lloyd. 105 to play here in the fourth quarter. Inbounds play coming for the Tigers. They get it into Spencer just across the timeline. He'll bring it back across the timeline. Drives in. Nice floater in the lane, but it's no good. Rebound. Oh, he chased it down. Spencer's got it and now tries to pass it off as he was falling. He kind of tripped there, and it goes as a turnover. Forty seconds to go. Drive here by Walker Kennedy. He'll kick it back out. That was, yeah, that was backcourt violation on Piedmont. So they'll turn it over.
Cal will toss it in from the side. 33.1 seconds to go in this one. Looks like the Tigers will be playing for third place tomorrow afternoon against Life Prep Academy, a prep school out of Wichita. They fell in their semifinal game to, Wich uh, to Webb City earlier today. But Webb City looks like they're going to play Piedmont for the championship tomorrow afternoon. Now we got a whistle and a foul and two free throws coming. That is the fifth foul, I believe, on Ethan Holiday. So he'll have to come out. And they'll get a sub. Garrett Hahn will check in for him. And Cal goes to the line for the Tigers. Missed the first. Cal struggled early this season at the free throw line. He's been much better here of late, but misses that one. Second one rolls around and falls through. But he makes one of two. That'll make it 51 to 35 with 10 seconds to go. Piedmont gets it across the timeline. They'll run out the clock and win this one here tonight. So your final score going to be Piedmont 51, Fort Scott 35. Don't look at that final score and think the Tigers got blown out in this one. They did not. Fort Scott gave their best effort and just came up short here in this one to a team with a lot of athletes and held their own. I mean, I was impressed. For about three and a half quarters, the Fort Scott Tigers really held their own against this team that, you know, and, and you never know, but when you compare a city like Oklahoma City to Kansas City and when you compare a, a suburb of Oklahoma City to a suburb of Kansas City, say uh, maybe Blue Valley, maybe Olin Park, some of those schools, and you think of the competition that those schools are in in the Kansas side, st state to state is going to be different, there's no doubt, but uh, you got to feel encouraged by the way, the Tigers and Lady Tigers both played here in this one. Uh, we watched the, the second girls game here tonight. And as far as the games tonight, Nevada was the best of the four teams, in my opinion. And the Lady Tigers almost got them and, and beat them and played as good as them, if not better than them, at times tonight. So uh, very encouraging performance by Fort Scott uh, on both sides as the Tiger, uh, Tigers and Lady Tigers uh, lose here tonight. But again, good efforts for both teams as uh, as the as – Final score here of the boys game is uh, 51 to 35. We'll run through the scores here real quick and then get on the way home. We're going to have an early day, early morning tomorrow. So we want to make sure that we get uh, everything going here. So let's um, get that final score up there for you as a final. And again, Fort Scott falling here in this one, 51 to 35. Uh, let's see here. Leading scores for the Tigers, Dirks Kegler with eight, Cannon Brown with eight, Spencer Goldston with eight, Cal Cousins with five, Rocco Lafredo four, and Dub Chipman with two. As Fort Scott only got 35 points, but again, they played a whale of a game defensively, especially for three and a half quarters in this one, as uh, this game was not, not indicative of the final score. It was much closer than that. Walker Kennedy led all scores with 19 points for Piedmont. Bryce McConnell was the only other one with double figures as he had 10. And then Cam Hanrahar with 7, Ethan Holiday with 7, Connor Beard with 6, and Braden Lloyd with 2. And that all adds up to 51 for Piedmont. So let's find the uh, bracket here real quick on the boys' side. So again, Fort Scott falling in this one. The other uh, game in the winner's bracket here uh, earlier today, Webb City defeated Life, uh, uh, Life Prep Academy out of Wichita. 71-61 was the final score in that one. And so 71-61 was the final score there. So Webb City advances to the championship. Uh, they will take on Piedmont. That'll be at 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. The Tigers will play at 11.30 tomorrow afternoon. And out of all these games we find, or yeah, tomorrow morning, sorry, 11.30 is in the morning. And out of all these games this week and all the breaks that we've had in between, the Tigers and Lady Tigers will play back-to-back -back tomorrow. So the Lady Tigers are going to play at 10 tomorrow morning, and the Tiger boys will play at 11.30. The Fort Scott boys will take on Life Prep Academy out of Wichita. 
The Lady Tigers will face, uh, let's see here, they will face uh, Blue Springs uh, that has a front neck connection. We've talked about this before. Uh, is it Frank Spigarelli? That's the head coach for, uh, for Blue Springs. Uh, Spigarelli, if, you know, if you've been around southeast Kansas and, and uh, Crawford County, Kansas, the Spigarelli fa- name should ring a bell to you. That is a very prominent Mark Spigarelli is the, uh, the head coach there. Uh, so that is a big front net connection. He always brings his Blue Springs team down here, and that is always a great competition, a great team. Uh, and a great game for whoever gets to play Blue Springs. And the Lady Tigers are going to get to start with them at 10 o'clock in the morning. So uh, Fort Scott Lady Tigers lose. They had a tough one today. They fell to Nevada 53-52. to They were trailing by 12 at halftime, came all the way back, had that game tied by the end of the third quarter. In fact, I believe they, if I, I believe they outscored Nevada 17-3 to in the third quarter. They changed defenses on Nevada. They went from their 2-3 zone to a box and one against Clara Swearingen, who was going to Pitt State from, uh, from Nevada. And she only made one basket in the entire second half. Unfortunately, it was the game-winning shot at the buzzer, and that sunk the, the Lady Tigers. So 53-52 to was the final score there as Nevada defeated Fort Scott early on the girls' side. And then, of course, we just finished up the boys losing here tonight, 51-35 as uh, Fort Scott's uh, boys take it uh, take the loss here tonight. So, again, Lady Tigers will take on Blue Springs at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, the Tiger boys will face Life Prep Academy, a uh, prep school out of Wichita at 1130. Both of those will be third-place games here at the Frontenac Four States Classic, and uh, we'll have them for you. Um, hopefully we'll have video for you tomorrow. Um, we've got some ideas on how to rectify that, and so hopefully uh, that is... Uh, um, hopefully that's a, 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 a uh, hopefully that will be an option for us uh, tomorrow. If not, we'll we'll do exactly like what we've got right here, and we'll get that uh, problem rectified uh, going forward. But uh, again, hopefully we'll have uh, that going forward. And um, yeah, so a tough one here tonight for both teams as uh, Tigers and Lady Tigers end up on the losing side. We need to thank our sponsors. Um, we, I don't know that we've done this. I got so flustered at the beginning of the game with the way the video was. I don't know that I did this at all tonight, so I uh, apologize again for that. Uh, Chad Cousins is your local 1842 Wealth Management Financial Advisor. Contact Chad for more information by email at chad at 1842wealth.com or call Chad at 620-215-9240. State Farm Agent Kale Nelson is your local agent for Home and Auto. Contact Kale for a quote by visiting Kale's website, kalenelson.com, or give him a call at 620-223-2828. Highway 3 has modern personalized fleece name blankets along with fun and unique personalized gifts. You can also now find Highway 3 products at several retail stores in the area. For more information, follow their Facebook page at facebook.com slash shophighway3 or check out their website shophighway3.com. Joey Fritter is a loan officer with Open Mortgage. Open Mortgage is a multi-channel mortgage lender believing that better is possible. Constantly striving to bring a better mortgage experience to everyone, Joey can assist you in buying a home from start to finish. Her office is located at 1 East Wall Street in Fort Scott. Call today to get pre-qualified for a home loan at 620-644-84, excuse me, 8146. Let me give you that phone number for Joey again, 620-644-8146. Liberty Savings has been in Fort Scott since 1919, helping community members with their banking needs for over 100 years. Visit them at 24 South Judson or call 620-223-0300. H2 Painting LLC, the right way the first time. Look them up on Facebook at facebook.com slash h2paintingsek or call them at 620-605-2769. And Edward Jones has been advising customers in the world of finance for over 100 years. Financial advisor Jamie Armstrong continues that tradition in Fort Scott. Contact Jamie by phone at 620-223-1866 or email Jamie at jamie.armstrong at edwardjones.com. Again, a tough night here tonight for the Fort Scott Tigers and Lady Tigers. And um, again, we do apologize for the, for the video issues. Uh, we will get that rectified. That is first on my list so we will have that uh, fixed um, hopefully by tomorrow morning uh, but uh, anyway tough uh, tough luck on the court as well for the Tigers and Lady Tigers 
as uh, the Fort Scott Lady Tigers fall earlier today, 53-52 to to Nevada. The Tiger boys fall here tonight to the Piedmont Wildcats out of uh, Oklahoma, 51-35, to the final score there. Both teams will play for third place tomorrow. Lady Tigers will play Blue Springs at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Tiger boys will play Life Prep Academy out of Wichita. And that one will start, is scheduled to start at 11.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, both of those games for you here on Duck Bait TV. So join us for those tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll have good broadcasts for you tomorrow. For my dad on the camera tonight when it was working during the girls game, Willie Abatey, to the family back home and to all of the Duck Baits out there, I'm Tony Abatey. We know you have many options when watching Fort Scott Tiger and Lady Tiger basketball, but thanks for joining us on Duck Bait TV. Good night, Kansas.